Welcome to the Vancouver Maritime Museum. My name is Craig Beatty and I'm the president of the Maritime Museum Society. Today we are opening a very special exhibit. It's our celebration of the 100th anniversary of Roald Amundsen's voyage through the Northwest Passage, one of the truly great events of the 20th century. It's particularly special to us here at the museum because of the St. Rock behind me. The St. Rock was an RCMP vessel that also traveled through the Northwest Passage, not once, but twice in 1942, and it was captained by another Norwegian, Henry Larsen. On our left here is the St. Rock. Uh, what has always surprised me about the St. Rock is, is how such a tiny vessel became so important in our country's history and indeed in navigation. Not only did the St. Rock go through the Northwest Passage twice, but it was also the first ship to completely circumnavigate the North American continent. It did this during uh, the wartime, uh, the Second World War, as an RCMP schooner. As we walk along here uh, beside the St. Rock, we have some of the really interesting artifacts that the museum has uh, obtained from Northern Canada. What we have on the right over here are a number of pieces of art from the Arctic uh, donated to the Vancouver Maritime Museum by Arthur Lang, a very well-known uh, politician in Canada. Arthur Lang was a great contributor to both the museum and the country in his, uh, in his work as um, a Canadian statesman. One of the things that we're particularly proud of at the Vancouver Maritime Museum is Arctic exploration and the Arctic explorers who have made so much difference uh, to our country. These days we're thinking of the North more and more because of climate change and the clearing of ice in the Arctic Ocean. But in fact, the Arctic has obsessed explorers for well over 150 years. We're particularly proud of our associations with Henry Larsen, the captain of the St. Rock, and with the Norwegian community here in Vancouver. Henry Larsen was a, a, a Norwegian immigrant to Canada and was uh, intensely interested both in Arctic exploration and the RCMP uh, as an RCMP officer on board the St. Rock uh, working in the Arctic. In this corner beside me here, we celebrate another great Arctic explorer, and in fact, it's Roald Amundsen, uh, the explorer we're celebrating in this, uh, this evening's reception. Roald Amundsen was one of the great explorers of his day, and I would liken him in many ways to a man with the prestige that an astronaut would have today. Roald Amundsen not only went through the Northwest Passage, but he conquered Antarctica as well and was the first to reach the South Pole. He did so at the very turn of the 20th century in one of the greatest expeditions that has been known in Arctic and Antarctic uh, exploration. His ship was a tiny little one called the Joa, which is now uh, housed in Oslo, Norway with another Arctic uh, exploratory ship, the Fram. Uh, with the three ships, the St. Rock, the Fram, and the Joa, uh, people are now able to have access to three of the most important vessels in Arctic exploration ever. Hi, I'm Phoenix and I'm from Sustainable Television. I'm here with Craig Emerson, and we are in the forecastle of St. Rock. Here at the Maritime Museum? Yes. And it's very interesting. It's very compact. Uh, you've got very cramped sleeping quarters here, eight bunks in very close proximity, and uh, 
and right at the bow too. So at the beginning and the end of the voyage going through the Northwest Passage, uh, when you might be in some rougher Pacific or Atlantic seas, they would feel it first. this would be getting all of the impact of the, of the, the rough North Seas. I see. So you have to be a very brave seaman to take this, undertake this type of voyage. Or have a really strong stomach. <laughs> So I hear that you're related to Rod Amundsen. What is your relation to him? Yes, he yeah. was a, a cousin of my grandfather. I believe specifically I'm a second cousin once or twice removed. Um, mm -hmm. But it's always been a, a great fascination for me to have a, a world famous polar explorer uh, in, in our family history. And mm -hmm. uh, many times I've been approached by people when they've heard my name just to ask and, and to try and understand what part of me is part of his history. And how would you respond to them? What would your answer be? Uh, well, we've got a, a great story in how we came to, to Vancouver. My grandfather, as a young Norwegian merchant navy uh, man, was working on freighters and he, he was on a, a, a freighter off of the coast of uh, Tahiti and his ship ran aground and sank and uh, all hands escaped and everyone survived and uh, he was making his way back to Norway, uh, came up the Pacific coast through Vancouver, mm -hmm. uh, met and fell in love here and, and stayed and that's how my family came to be here. And now there's several generations of younger and older Amundsons and Robinsons and Belangers, the, the, mm -hmm. the names are spread apart. I see. What, what did you think um, made Amundsen decided to interact and communicate with the Inuits because I felt like it was he was I guess a forefront in in understanding that the, that interaction was crucial to their survival and I, I think uh, um, it might have had something to do with his Norwegian heritage or his Norwegian upbringing but mm -hmm. he had a, a basic level of respect for the people who made their living in very difficult climates and he chose to learn from them mm -hmm. and that helped him in his uh, explorations. Okay. What were some of the knowledge and the skills that they passed on to him? That Certainly his clothing. Yeah. If you ever oh, look yes. at the clothing, yeah. uh, he took on the, the various skins mm -hmm. and used their sled dogs and, and many other things. I mean, from his Norwegian background, he took his skiing yeah. uh, and that allowed uh, him and his men to travel uh, further and faster mm -hmm. um, and studied the local people, how they survived, mm -hmm. incorporated those techniques to make sure that his uh, exploration team was safe mm -hmm. and secure and had enough um, resources to get there and back. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he was a brilliant scientific mind and that's why he was successful. Fittingly, the, uh, the Larson statue is on the, oh there we go, on the bow of the St. Rock. And uh, that bronze statue was provided to the museum uh, by contributions from the Norwegian community uh, here in Vancouver. It's uh, one of the pieces we're particularly happy with. Very fitting memorial to uh, a man who in retrospect, I guess, was both a great Norwegian and a great Canadian. One of the things that's made me particularly happy about uh, the way the St. Rock is, is displayed here in Vancouver is that it's possible for people to get on board the ship and go through practically every inch of the ship. I get uh, tre tremendous pleasure seeing children going through the wheelhouse, tugging at the sails and playing with the polar bear skins on the deck and, and with the equipment that Henry Larson's own crew used on their voyages. It gives people a connection to history that you just can't get any other way. Let's go this way and I'll show you some, uh, some more of the Vancouver Maritime Museum. Uh, we're moving now through our lobby towards the, uh, the TK Gallery where we have our rolled Amundsen exhibit. But on the way, perhaps I could show you a couple of things that are very special to us. Perhaps here we could just stop for a moment because I'd like to show you Arnold 176. Arnold 176 is the chronometer that was used by Captain George Vancouver in his voyages along the coast. Chronometers were extremely important because it was only with chronometers, that is by knowing the time very accurately, that sailors could determine exactly where they were. And it was by having uh, tremendously accurate mechanical clocks that the charts 
of the Pacific Ocean and the charts of the West Coast were generated. And in fact, if you uh, look beyond me, uh, uh, just over to the display here, you see an excellent example of the kind of charting that was done in the Strait of Juan de Fuca as far back as the late 18th uh, century and to some extent even earlier than that. The early explorers were astonishingly careful uh, and accurate about their measurements. When you look at a chart like this today, you can identify practically everything that uh, we would recognize now in the uh, lower part of the uh, BC coast. It's uh, quite amazing to see some of these old um, uh, charts of, of this area. We are celebrating the 100th anniversary of Roald Amundsen's uh, trips through the Northwest Passage uh, here in Canada, but also celebrating his tremendous contributions to Antarctic exploration as well. As you may know, Roald Amundsen was the first explorer to make it to the South Pole in 1911. The Norwegians had a very different approach to Arctic and Antarctic exploration than, than people from some other countries. One of the things that was most extraordinary about Roald Amundsen's style was that he learned tremendously from the people he met. He had great uh, respect for the Inuit people, spent a lot of time with them. In fact, uh, he actually spent several winters with the Inuit people in northern Canada and became a master of the same techniques that they had used to do so well um, in our north. Survival in the Arctic is, is not a trivial thing and for Arctic exploration and in fact for Antarctic exploration as well, those survival skills became essential. This really became obvious when Roald Amundsen uh, visited the Antarctic in 1911 and found himself in a race for the South Pole with uh, Robert Scott, the British explorer. Scott had taken a very highly mechanized approach to reaching the South Pole with caterpillar tractors, a lot of mechanized machinery, uh, a very expensive and elaborate expedition. Amundsen, on the other hand, drew from his experience in northern Canada, relied on dogs, re relied on sleds, and re re relied on the skills that he had learned when he was doing his Northwest Passage exploration just a few years earlier. Uh, the result we all know, uh, Amundsen made it to the South Pole first and back again with his entire crew in good order. Scott was not so lucky. He made it to the South Pole after Amundsen, uh, but in fact uh, dry, uh, died very tragically with uh, most of his crew on the way back uh, to the coast. It uh, was not a happy time uh, for the British, certainly, but it represented a tremendous achievement and in fact was really the last great frontier in exploration. It's hard these days for us to realize just impor how important polar exploration was in the late 19th and early 20th century. It truly was like us going to the moon. My name is Elsie Beert Eichlin. I'm the Norwegian ambassador to Canada and I'm watching Sustainable T TV. <laughs>